Minasan, Hokari Nasai. Today I have a fun little hypothetical video. And to put it simply, what if the say you from Love Live didn't pass their audition? Where would they be now? What would they be doing? Just a few things before I begin though. I'm not implying that if they didn't pass, they would never have became Seiyu. Some were already rookies or even established names prior to joining the franchise. It's also really easy to say most of them would have just been regular any song singers or traditional actresses. However, that's too easy, so we'll try to avoid that, but it's very clear that's where like most of Aqua and Muse would have ended up anyway. Some of these jobs they would have had have already been confirmed by the girls, and others are just my opinion. Also, I'm going to be generous and say that they are just as successful in this new career as they are at their current. And finally, I'll mostly just be covering the first three groups because the newer girls haven't really spoken about their goals prior to being in the industry, and I just don't have enough information about them to justify them going down a different career path. But with that out of the way, let's begin with the Muse ladies, and specifically their leader, Emi Onesan. So like, I was gonna make a joke about something, if you know, you know, but I know that some people will get really mad, so I'm just not gonna do it. Instead, she loves dinosaurs and has a certificate to prove her knowledge. Her being a paleontologist just seems right, but I'd also like to throw a different idea into the mix, as you saw in the thumbnail, and if you don't already know, she has a skill of arm wrestling. And well, let's just skip the arms only part and see her as a professional Joshi wrestler. Honestly, I would really, really love to see this. Aya Uchida actually has a few options here as well. She originally enrolled in the Yoyogi Animation School, so she could have stuck with that and had a job in animation. There's also her love for alcohol, but the thing I most see her doing is pursuing her talent for hair arrangement. She was the first person in Love Life to start doing her hair like her character, and I'm sure she's the reason all girls do that now. So if she was never the seiyuu for Kotori, instead she'd be the one doing the hair for all the girls to look like their characters. Mamori is the first person I'd say was just born to entertain. If she wasn't a voice actor, she'd be just a regular actor or stage actress, probably in the Takarazuka Revue, which is something she initially planned on doing. Next up is Nanjo, who again, I think was just born to sing. So that's what she's doing in every timeline though her unhealthy obsession with Final Fantasy could have led to her being a roleplay streamer for Final Fantasy XIV. Pyle Sama most likely would have just been a singer, though I guess with her proficiency in Korean, she could have also been a translator, possibly even for the Love Live franchise. Repeat is another one who's easy to place, she would have just been an actress. She already was an actress prior to joining the Seiyuu side, so. But I guess she could have also been a Grab Your Idol as well. Keeping up with that, Shika also very obviously would have stuck to Grab Your Modeling, She's actually even got a new photo book coming out soon as I record this. Though I suppose she could have been a variety YouTuber, or simply just a vlogger. Second to last lady here, Kusun, her original goal was ballet, and she is very talented in said form of dance, so ballerina. Hey, maybe even also learning ice skating or gymnastics, incorporating those ballet skills, and competing in the Olympics. Finally, Soamaru has already published a short manga IRL. So, in this alternate universe, let's say since she didn't become a voice actor, she put all of her time and effort into her story and became a very successful mangaka. Moving on to Aqua. Anju, you already know her heart belongs to the theater. So that would have been her main focus. It realistically already is. Or maybe some sort of sport. She is very athletic. She could have even focused on her karate practice and also competed in the Olympics. Well, at least until current day Olympics, since the event is no longer a thing at the games. Next is Shuka, another natural entertainer, but in this case, instead of singing and dancing, I've actually already said this before quite a few times, but I low-key see her as a very successful stand-up comedian. If Ida wasn't a seiyuu, we all know she would be a chef who also draws a very detailed pictures while cooking. So, moving on to Farihata. Uh, I'm just kidding, let's go back to Ida and give a serious answer. And I mean, she could have actually pursued cooking and took it very seriously like she does now. Then I also thought of her piano practicing, but she only really started that because of Love Live. So, she could have also went down the grab your route. We've all seen her two photo books. She is very appealing. However, I'm gonna say maybe she kept up with learning English and became a translator. Now, actually moving on to Farihata. Artist, animator, something like that. We all know how gifted she is there, arguably the best artist in the whole franchise. Maybe someone in Niji rivals her, but we'll get there in a minute. If art didn't pan out for Furi, she could have also pursued photography. Then again, she has stated her childhood dream was being a veterinarian or a mangaka. I wonder what her story would have been about. Kanako used to sing covers at karaoke and upload it to the internet, but there's also her love for games. Since most of the Niji girls could have easily been streamers or YouTubers, I'm trying to keep Aqua's hypothetical jobs a little different. With Keen, I literally just see her working as a maid in Akihabara, which she actually did for a short amount of time, though I'm not sure if it was actually in Akiba. 
Aina Suzuki is a vocal goddess, there's just no way she isn't singing, if not an any song singer then perhaps a folk singer at festivals, since she can do that traditional Japanese throat singing. Though her passion for shoujo manga could have led her to working in that field, as like an editor or something. Singing is much, much more likely though. Sua does have a love for games and could be a very chill comfort streamer, but she has said that she wanted to be a childcare worker or a nursery school teacher, so there it is. Keeping up with that, Kyan is another natural entertainer. I really don't see a world where she isn't performing in some way, but in this alternate world, she decided to become a preschool teacher, something she wanted to do in our real world prior to being a performer, and she even has a license to do so. Last up for Aqua, Arisa, an actress, another really easy one to pick. She already does way more acting than voice acting, and has even dabbled into stage plays recently. You could also argue grabbier for her, but she seems to have stayed away from that over the past few years. And real quick, both of the Saint Snow girls would have just been actors, singers, or regular idols. Those two are also just natural born performers, kind of a theme for Aqua. Like how Niji are the alcoholic gamers. Speaking of them, next is the Nijigasaki School Idol Club. Let's begin with their leader, as always, a goodie. Prior to Seiyu Life, she competed in beauty pageants. Usually being a finalist, and I mean look at her, no wonder she did so well in those. So if she wasn't in this industry, I'd say she'd be a very successful model, whether it's just her face or for fashion. Akari had always thought that she would become an illustrator. Realistically, her art abilities could have led to any form of illustration or animation job. I like to picture her eventually becoming a lead animator for a big studio like A1 Pictures or Madhouse or something. With Akina, I actually have two speculations for her. One is simply a streamer on Twitch or YouTube. She already does that way more often than like any other CU I follow. And she's really good at games as well as being entertaining. But another choice is something that she kind of already did, and that's being a translator behind the scenes. Since she is fluent in Japanese and both Chinese languages, Languages. Shu is similar in the translator sense. Honestly, she's more fluent in English than Homin is in Chinese. Aside from that, the only other thing I could see her is just being a standard YouTuber, which she already does on the side. The very sweet, kind, gentle Maria, I could see her being like a nurse, daycare center babysitter, or even a preschool teacher. But she does have her passion for photography, so she could have easily been a photographer. Maybe even taking the photo book pictures for girls like Akarin, or just concert photos for love live shows. As for Chemi, her passion for alcohol and theme parks could have led her to being in some kind of brewery or an employee at Japan's Disneyland, or even the new Super Nintendo World. I wouldn't exactly call those stable jobs, but hey, it's something. Kaorin is fairly similar, her love for alcohol could have led to something over there. However, when she was very young, she used to write stories because of her interest in anime. Oh, there's also her love for games. She could have been a very entertaining streamer. That gamer rage she has is really something else. Moving on to Hinaki. Well, I got nothing for her, just her love for games again. It's like all the Niji girls are nerds or something. But Yano-chan is also actually really good at dancing, so maybe a backup dancer for a really big group or something. Mayu is someone who has been aiming to be a seiyu since the very beginning, not ever even thinking about anything else. Though as with most Niji girls, she is a passionate gamer. So with her, maybe aside from being a streamer, she could have been some sort of developer. Nachan is in almost the exact same situation, aiming only to be a seiyu, but is also a passionate gamer. She does already stream quite often as well, so again, easy to say she could have just done that. However, she also has that kind, sweet, gentle nature with a big smile, so I could also see her working with kids in some sort of way. So now we have Miyu. I love this lady so much. I am very thankful she is in the industry. Being someone who was already in a pop group way before Love Live, so Niji or not, she's still a performer. But what if she didn't pass the audition for Iris? Well, as some of you may know, Miyu attended a technical high school and obtained a license to operate a forklift and to arc weld, which is kind of hot, pun intended. It is very safe to say she would have been putting those skills to use in some factory somewhere. Moika Koizumi, I do not see a world where she isn't an entertainer in some way. If not a seiyuu, then a stage or regular actress. But to keep things interesting, she did always say that she wanted to be an archaeologist. Probably for her love for dinosaurs and to focus on them. But there's also her love for reptiles in general, so maybe a zoologist strictly for reptiles. There is also possibly a zookeeper, which she has said that she also wants to do. Or just working at an aquarium, which is one of her favorite places to visit. As long as it doesn't involve bugs, she's okay. Which I find funny, because reptiles usually only eat bugs. On to Tamori. Again, this is someone where no matter what, she is going down the singing career path. And I mean, with vocals like hers, there ain't no other way. Last for Niji is Coco. If she wasn't Tetsuna's new seiyuu, she would be the drummer for the band My Go. I did initially intend that as a joke, but the more I think about it, she is also just built for entertainment. If she wasn't a seiyuu, she really would be a musician or some sort of actress or just a singer. 
And now we have Liela, well just a few of them. Liu, if you don't know, she was a cosplayer before she got famous. That was always her main passion and helped her get to where she is now. But since then she has done many, many photo books and photo shoots. So if she wasn't a performer, she could have easily been a cosplayer or model or both. Nagisa has a few things in common with her senpai, those being a ballerina like Kusun and a beauty pageant competitor like Agupon. So like those two, she could have either become a professional ballerina or just a dancer in general or some sort of model. And just to keep the video going a little bit longer, Nozomi's love for manga and books in general could have led to her becoming a librarian. There is also her art talent, but I've used that too much already. Akane's love for basketball and her talent in competitive shooting has her competing in the Olympics in one of those two events. Her girlfriend Wakana has a love for swimming, so hey, maybe in this other life they're still friends and both compete for Team Japan just in different sports. Those last three are a huge stretch, but hey, as with the theme of this whole video, I thought it would be fun to hypothesize. Last up is Yuina, who would very obviously be a model. She is a lot like a Guri senpai, though she does have her guitar skill as well. So lead guitarist for a very popular old girl rock band, and she models on the side. Then I got nothing for the Hasu girls, except maybe Konachi, who is also a very funny and silly person. So let's toss her on the comedy circuit with Shuka, possibly even having a crossover show at some point. I would pay good money for that. And with that we have reached the ending, sorry if some of these got repetitive, it did get difficult to think of completely unique jobs for the girls who haven't really shared too much about their prior goals. And honestly a lot of them fall into the same category. Most of them are singers, with a few dancers, and about the same amount of musicians. And obviously like 90% of them had the goal of Seiyu from the very beginning. Feel free to drop your own thoughts below about any of the girls, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and learned something new. If so, please do leave me a like, and definitely join me in the next video about everyone's favorite Onesan. As always, I look forward to seeing you there.